notice here right off the bat, the end systolic volume is decreased. It's less than the normal end systolic volume. And so then as we move through filling here, what you'll notice here is that the end diastolic volume is also decreased. And so here you move from here to here. So then as we move during isovolmetric contraction, as you'll notice, it's about the same. It's maybe a little bit decreased, but not significant enough where you would say that the afterload is changed. So I would say the afterload is about the same. And then as a result of having a decreased end diastolic volume, what you have is a decreased preload. As a result of a decreased preload, you're not going to be able because remember preloads essentially how much you've stretched out the heart muscles so if you don't stretch out the muscles much it's, it's not as powerful as usual and so you're not going to generate as much pressure and so that's what you see here with this dramatic decrease in pressure left ventricular pressure and so as you come over here you also see a decrease in end systolic volume what's important though is that if you'll notice the end diastolic volume is, is much more decreased than the end systolic volume and what i want to point out here is at this point this is where the mitral valve would open. And so as you can see here, you had to go to a much less pressure here. So at this point, this is where the pressure in the left atrium was greater than the pressure in the left ventricle. And so as you can see here, you had to drop the left ventricular pressure more than usual, as you can see from here to here, to allow for opening of the mitral valve. And so when you have trouble opening the mitral valve, that's what's called mitral stenosis.